Watch you guys. Got an email from Steve, and I've blurred out his last name, but he says, I've published one or more methods on upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11, which is the best method. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. There's no real best method. It's what really works for you. As long as you get to the same end goal, that's all that really matters. But I'll show you a method which I think will work perfectly fine for you. The method I'm going to show you today can be used on supported hardware, i.e. your computer is supported for Windows 11 and you want to upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and you don't want to lose any data, you can use this method. Or if you've got unsupported hardware, meaning your computer is not compatible with Windows 11 due to system requirements, you can use this method also. So that's what we're going to look at in today's video. Now the method I'm going to show you today is not going to be stripping out anything from the operating system. It's not going to be making any major changes to the operating system, like debloating the system or anything like that. This is the most cleanest and easiest way to get to the desktop uh, from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And then you can choose to do some tweaking afterwards. And I'll show you that as well as an added bonus at the end if you want to. But let's have a quick word from today's sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description. Use my promo code capital B, capital R, 09. Apply that to your order and get a 30% discount on all your purchases. Once you submit your order, they will send you your key. You can then use that key to activate your version of Windows like you see right here. Okay, so let's get started. So we're at Windows 10's desktop right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to settings here. And you can see inside time and language, it's important that you download the correct ISO. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to keep all your data and all of your settings and stuff like that. So the language and region need to be exactly the same as the one you're downloading from Microsoft's website. So if you're downloading the ISO image, uh, it's going to have to be exactly identical. So when you come down onto Windows uh, 11's website or Microsoft's website here for Windows 11, you'll be able to then download the ISO right here. Now, this is the one where you need to make sure it's correct. Otherwise, you can run into issues and it will be grayed out. This is a common problem I see a lot of people having and then they can't end up saving their data. So right here, English International, because the region was English International. And if it's a different type of region, then you have to make sure you're selecting the right region for that. Once you download your ISO, you can then use this and mount it. A safer way of doing it is downloading the media creation tool. And this is the method I would use if I was you, because it will be a lot easier. Open up the media creation tool, it say getting a few things ready, accept their terms conditions. It's going to get a few more things ready. And then once it's done this, you can see right here, use recommended options for this PC. Leave that checked because this is select language and edition. This is to make sure you're selecting the correct edition for your PC. Once you click next, choose the ISO file and click next again. And now you can save the ISO file to your desktop. This is probably the preferred way of doing it because that way you're not going to mess things up and you'll be able to save all of your data and your PC settings using this method rather than downloading the ISO itself, which can cause a lot of problems. So it's going to create the media for us and then download it to our PC. So now we can click on finish because we are now done with the media creation tool. So once we've got this done, let's close off the media creation tool and we'll go to our downloads folder and we can now get our ISO file that we've just downloaded. So let this uh, clean up the system a little bit. There we go. And now we can go to File Explorer here and then go to our download section right here. So I'm just going to close the web browser and we're going to go to our downloads directory. There we go. And there we have Media Creation Tool here. I can delete that now. And there is our ISO file right here inside there. So that's the one we're going to be using. So right click on this and mount it like so. And all you need to do is look inside here. There is all the files that is going to be used for the upgrade process from Windows 10 to Windows 11. So next, let's go to this PC and you should see your drive letter is E or another drive letter which are, is mounted on your actual PC. It might be different to mine. So what you need to do is type CMD in the search and then run this as administrator. And this will open up a little small command prompt box, which you can type in a simple command to actually make this installation so easy. 
So what we need to do here now is type E colon. That's our drive letter for our actual virtual CD-ROM drive, which we mounted our ISO to. If yours is a different letter, just do that letter and the colon there. Now you can do setup.exe and then space. And then we do forward slash product space server like so. Now there's quite a few other switches you can add on here, but I'm going to keep it really simple uh, for you in this video. If you want to see a full video on all of the little uh, switches that you can use here, uh, then let me know in the comments section down below. We are now done with the command prompt window. We can close that off and it should say install Windows Server, Windows Server Setup. Change the updates and drivers and options feature to not right now because we don't want to update anything right now. Click next and we can move on with the upgrading process from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Don't worry, it's not going to install or upgrade to Windows Server. This is to help bypass. If you're on unsupported hardware, this method will work perfect. If you're on a normal computer, it's still going to work okay. So now you can see here, choose what you want to keep. We can now keep our files, settings, and our apps. Now, in my opinion, it's always best to do a fresh install of Windows. But if you do want to upgrade and you do want to keep all your files, settings, and apps, and you want to upgrade, this is how you can do it. So click next, and we're going to keep everything on the system. It's going to make sure you're ready to install, and it's going to check your system, but it will bypass any sort of uh, needs that you have for unsupported hardware if you've got unsupported hardware in your computer. It will bypass that and install an upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11. It's now going to make sure you've got enough space, and now you can see it's ready to install. And all we need to do now is click Install, and you'll see a little blue window popping up saying Installing Windows Server, it's not installing Windows Server, as I mentioned. It's upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. This is the workaround or the bypass for unsupported hardware. Now, all you need to do is sit back and let it go through the motions. And there we are, we're at the desktop. Now, it is fully bloated, Windows 11, and it hasn't been debloated using this method. And I've done it like this for you, just in case you just wanted a stock Windows 11 and you didn't want any scripts or any sort of other uh, programs debloat in Windows 11 for you. So if you want to leave it as it is right here, the video should end for you right here. If you want to do a quick uh, deblow of the system, you can go to one website, which is O, &O and you can go here and they basically download O, &O Shut Up 10 Plus Plus, and you can download their App Buster as well, and it will get rid of all of the stuff. Now, yes, there's tons of other software that I've shown you in the past like uh, Chris Tires Text Tool and a load of other uh, software. If you want to go down those routes, you can choose any of those software, but this one is pretty simple. You can go through and select which apps you want to uninstall from the system. This gives you full control of what you want to remove and what you want to keep on the PC. It gives you a little handy recommended remove, optional, and so on right here. So just go through and remove some of the stuff you don't need on the PC. And what you can do is then click on the remove and it will go ahead and remove all of the unwanted apps leave it on current user if you want to remove it for the current user and for the computer you can click on computer i'll just leave it on current user if i was you and just click yes click ok and it will go ahead and start to uninstall all of that for the current user and they won't see any of those applications once they're all uninstalled so you get full control of what you want to uninstall and what you want to keep so now we can go to the other program, which is uh, O&O Shut Up 10 plus plus, open this application. All you need to do here is go to Actions, click on Apply Recommended Green if you wanted to, or you can go to the next option, which is the yellow one, which is the one I always select. And then all you need to do here is toggle back on the uh, microphone and camera if you have web camera and microphone. If you don't, you can leave uh, both of those are disabled if you don't use microphone and camera. If you do, then toggle them on, like I've seen, shown you here, and make them red. And that way, they will not be blocked, and you'll be able to use your microphone and camera on your PC. That is pretty much it. You don't need to touch anything else with Windows. A lot of this stuff is pretty much as simple as that. All you need to do here is click OK, restart the computer, and we'll do that real quickly and we'll get back to the desktop and I'll show you the sort of results you can get by just doing those two simple things if you wanted to 
get your system nice and clean and safe with no telemetry, no privacy concerns and all the bloat removed from the PC. So we're back at the desktop and you can already see it looks a lot cleaner. There's no bloat inside here. It's all gone and it's that simple. There's no complicated code you have to put into command prompt or anything like that. These settings are reversible as well and you do have that safety net of the system restore point. And this method works for unsupported hardware and supported hardware. You can use this method for both of those uh, upgrades from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And if you didn't want to sort of remove applications and change all of the privacy settings and things like that using ONO Shutup 10, then you can skip that part. Or you can go ahead and you can follow on and just do what I did there. It's that quick and simple. So I hope this answers all your questions. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on our Discord server. Links in the video description. Bye for now.